What's going on everyone, Tech Me Out here. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you some of the changes that you can expect with iOS 11. So what I have on my phone is a developer version of iOS 11. So it's not officially released right now, but this is more like a preview of some of the things you can expect that are gonna change whenever it does roll out for everyone to update to. So if you are excited about iOS 11 and what it has to bring, let me know by hitting that like button right now. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so that you can be updated when I drop a new video. So one thing in particular is within messages. You actually now have one-handed mode. So if you hold down the little emoji icon down here in the bottom left, and you slide over here to this keyboard icon in the right hand side, it gives you a keyboard that aligns to the right, or if you held it down again, it gives you a keyboard that will align it to the left so you can choose which side you need. That way you can text appropriately with one hand. You'll also notice some more subtle changes within the status bar as your signal strength icon and battery icon have also changed. Within settings under wallpaper, you also now have a new wallpaper to choose from, which is the one that I currently have running on my phone. And then one of the more cooler changes is that your control center is actually different, like completely revamped. So you now kind of almost have like this widget view. So you have your quick toggles up here in the top left, which you can actually force touch on, and then it will reveal some more options within here. So as you can see, you now have the option to turn on personal hotspot from your control center. However, these particular icons you can't force touch on. You can also force touch on your music right here. You can force touch on what you want to mirror to. You can also force touch on your flashlight, and instead of it saying low, medium, or high, you now have a slider that you can drag your finger on to adjust the brightness of your flashlight. Same thing applies for your brightness here. You now have a slider and this is also where you will access your night shift and you also have a slider option here on your volume, but you don't have to do the 3D touch to actually adjust the volume. You can do so from within here. Now your notification center looks a little bit different as well because when you slide down here from the top, it gives you your notifications that you have not yet acknowledged or seen recently, but it seems that if you swipe up in this area here, it shows you your notifications from earlier today. Now this really resembles your lock screen and it actually from within this view will let you pull up your camera with a swipe to the right or with a swipe to the left, you can pull up your today view. Now in your messages before your keyboard is accessed, you actually have like a little dock of your icons within the iMessage app store in which you have downloaded. So you can quickly jump between the ones you want. Also from within your messages, when you tap on the eye to reveal more information about that specific contact, they have changed the word from do not disturb to hide alerts. So it's the same thing. It doesn't do anything different, at least that I've noticed. So that's the same thing as do not disturb. Within certain areas of your phone, you now have these headers. So like in your settings, the header for it looks different as well as within your messages, you'll notice you'll have a little header in there as well that looks a little bit different than what it used to be. You also now have more control over your AirPods. So within your Bluetooth settings, if you tap on the eye next to your AirPods, it's gonna reveal some information in regards to like what you can do with a double tap on the left AirPod and what you can do with a double tap on the right AirPod. So you can double tap the left AirPod and pause the track or you can double tap the right AirPod and skip to the next track or go back to the previous track. So they gave you a little bit more media controls and only one can hope and cross their fingers that they will also give us the option to adjust the volume. Maybe a double tap on the left one turns down, double tap on the right one turns it up. I don't know, I guess we can just cross our fingers and hope for the best here. Now the management for your storage has also changed. So if you go into your settings and you head to general and then you go to iPhone storage, it's gonna give you a breakdown with the visual representation at the top to let you know how much space you've consumed based upon these categories of things. And you also now can put your text messages in iCloud. And you can also automatically offload unused apps when you're running low on storage. Um, if you need to get some space cleared up, you can also review large attachments that are in your messages. That way you can delete those big items in there and get some space back. So now you can let your messages live in iCloud and reduce the size that they take up on your phone and things like that. So thus far, I haven't been able to get messages in iCloud to stop giving me this little spinning wheel in which you see here. So I'm not quite sure what that particular section is going to look like. You now also have access to handoff within your multitask switcher. I'm not sure if that was there before. If it was, my apologies. But if you double press your home button, I saw earlier down here in the bottom left corner, an application in which I had opened on another Apple device so that I could resume it over here on my iPhone. Also within your settings, you have a emergency SOS so you can have it automatically call whoever you designated to call once you have basically set up who your emergency contact is going to be within the health app. Siri's voice is also a little bit different as well as the Siri animation. Tell me a funny joke. I don't think you'd understand a joke in my language. They're not so funny anyway. 
Another change that I'm really enjoying is the option to kind of like mark up screenshots on the fly and share them. So like say for instance there was an app I wanted to draw attention to on this screenshot that I'm about to take right now. I get a little thumbnail of the screenshot down here in the bottom left and if I tap on it, it then pulls up these little pencils and things that I could use that you would normally see in the notes app. You also can crop it down in the event you want to go ahead and get rid of something out of the screenshot. But maybe I wanted to annotate attention to this here, I can do so. If I were to have taken a screenshot of a document in which I needed to sign, I could easily do that from within here, which is a major bonus. If I made a mistake and I need to change something, I can hit the undo symbol in the top right there. If I'm all done and I just need to share this screenshot to another application, I can hit that little icon there in the bottom left and do so. So, and then if I select done, it actually gives me the option to save this screenshot or delete this screenshot, which is perfect because sometimes you just need a screenshot for that one moment. And then you don't ever go back to your gallery and you delete it and it's just there taking up space. So now you can go ahead and get rid of it. Now, for those of you out there who use Keychain, it's no longer within your settings under Safari. It's now moved to accounts and passwords within your settings. So in here, you'll see all of your accounts. And at the very top, you have access to your password in which you have saved in Keychain. So this is pretty nice. I really like that. So before you had to go to settings and Safari to access that, but now it's in its own little section. Now, and speaking of Safari, if you head into settings and you go to Safari, you'll see that you have this option now, which is try to prevent cross site tracking. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, if you've ever been on like a website like Amazon or eBay or something, and you were looking at a particular item and you left that site and you went to another site and now you're starting to see ads for the item in which you just looked at, Instagram is good for that and I hate it. If you want to reduce that from happening to you, you can turn on this toggle. So this is gonna do its best to help sites stop tracking what you're searching and presenting you ads for it. For all of my GIF or GIF, whatever you wanna call it, users out there, you now have an album that is made specifically for those. So you don't have to create an album anymore, which is what I was doing. It will auto create an album for you once it detects that you have a GIF saved on your phone, just like it does for selfies and landscape shots and all of that. Also with your live photos, you can now apply effects to them. So if I swipe up on this particular live photo, I now have the option to apply one of these live effects in which you see here to that particular live photo I took. So as soon as I tap it, it instantly applies. Thus far, those are the main things I found in iOS 11 that have changed, but I'm sure there's a lot more in there to find out. But if you want a part two of this type of video, let me know by hitting that like button down below, as well as dropping a comment in terms of what is your favorite feature of iOS 11? What are you most excited about? Also be sure to hit that subscribe button so that when I do drop another video, you'll be one of the first to know. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.